supporting Maysville lot, CD Home Rosebud model. So this is the plan, 1,000 square feet here, 110 by 120 foot lot, it's called the West Hills Subdivision 10K for the lot. Uh, that's a proposed site plan. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, as simple as uh, sewers right there, we know there's a sewer line, we know there's water here. To cut across this little street, that's not an issue, they use a backhoe and it's a few hundred bucks. Uh, offsets uh, perfect for solar gain. This is ready mm -hmm. for solar. The tree is right here. Perfect for early morning meditation on a carport with a tree right in front of you. Uh, I do my yoga and stuff on a carport in this in this uh, CD Go Home One model here. It's carport's really cool. So that's what it looks like here. Um, electricity, we know it's Ameren. Uh, that's free. Um I'm going to I'm going to try and keep you on task here yeah. because I have a, there's a lot of information that I need. Yeah. So so that's so December 8th through 12th is that is that build? Uh correct. Okay. And then what is the second lot? Second lot is in our land acquisition lot in that log here and that is Savannah 34 minutes away. So yeah. you look at this map here that's us and that's Savannah next to St. Joe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now that lot, we were looking at this right on the corner. You don't need to know the details, but that's how, this is what we're looking at. This is within the city limits, but the right next to the left where the map cuts off is, is actually the, the country where yep. we can build. So that's, that's the plan here. The, the water's across, the, you, sorry, the, the sewer's across T, so we need a directional bore. Um, but okay. that's, that's all doable and details are coming along for that. So that's, that's the plan. Um, uh, anything else? So, so at a minimum, you're going to do the first house in Maysville, and then there's potential to do the second house in Savannah. Yeah, planning on it. So, so the first five days, December 8th through the 12th, we're allow allowing five days for the first build. Now, if we don't finish, the contingency plan is uh, if people sign up for for the second one, we can, we can actually, I mean, uh, we're going to get 24 people uh, that we pay to make sure this absolutely gets done. Whoever signs up for the workshop that's extra, we are true to our open source education mission where in our highly productive work, we involve the public. So, but the framework is we got to show this works. And that means paying people. Uh, right now we're looking at $35 around budget. Like the whole budget for labor is actually 34 k for the first one. 50k for the second one. The second one's going to be 2,000 square feet. So we're testing both models. Um, the first one is the first model is 60k in materials. The other one is about 90k in materials. Uh, and the labor for the two bills, total of 84k in the budget. So we're allowing. That's a, it's a pretty good deal uh, as far as the amount we're budgeting for. That means 24 people at at 35 bucks. So we better do it. Okay. Got uh, December, it. December 13 through the 22nd. That's a 10-day period. We roll to the second site. Uh, we might consider, depending on where we're at, maybe you know, Dingleberry finishing up some tasks on the first one. Uh, but but really try to focus it on schedule. Like as long as we get it closed in, we can return to those other tasks later too. But I mean, in five days, that kind of budget time budget. Uh, is well within the bounds of what we've seen and documented and, and right now uh, I feel really good about the You know how we can roll out the tasks is always the, the challenge is Well, you don't have enough detailed build instructions for everything because we you know We didn't get to it. It takes thousands of hours to do it you know, Just to give you an example of the kind of stuff that makes me confident. So, you know take a look at for example uh, Katrina's log and, for example, um, kitchen cabinet instructions. I mean, it's down to every, so I'll scroll down, for example, to uh, kitchen build instructions. And this is the kind of detail we've got for just about everything. So, I mean, look at this stuff. So, um, <clears throat> there it is. Bam. Bam. You know, everything is, I mean, we got it pretty tight with pretty much step by step on everything. So that kind of level of detail, it's in full CAD and stuff like that. So, I mean, 
vet's kitchen. We got everything for plumbing, elect electrical. I mean, it's got, I'm, I've done that inside out, the plumbing inside out. Um, so we can, which means we build all the modules in parallel. Nobody's left standing because there's a cheat sheet for everybody. There's a, everything we extract out of FreeCAD. FreeCAD has technical drawing workbench where you just add dimensions and you can generate one one build cheat sheet, you know, with all the dimensions for a wall module, including like if it includes other stuff, if it includes an outlet, if it includes some the the exhaust fan or whatever, it's in there already. So we're digital. It's really good, so, and that we pull out right out of the CAD. We don't even have to worry about drawing that up, which you know we've done extensive work in CAD. So we're we're in good shape for a massive parallel swarm. In fact, I mean, if we get 50, 75 people. Oh, we can keep them all busy and we'll get done faster. So, um, yeah, this is good. Okay. What do you need from me? Let's get some people. Get some people, man. So we okay. got, uh, I'm going to start reaching out like, uh, I'm still finishing up on a, a video script and just posting that announcement. I was going to go full more on just inviting people and posting the public event so that's in the next next couple of a few days i mean we're right now we're exactly five weeks minus a day to the event um, so in the next few days we got to publish a video and full bore and get people. so so contacting people now is so, as we can start that now it's a more compelling case once we have the intro video you can provide people the script i've been working on a script and trying to refine it and practicing it so i can get a crisp clear video out there and i heard you mention involving the community but we also have to prove the model so you there's right. going to be uh, there's going to be 24 people who are paid mm -hmm. yeah and then accepting any volunteers is that how it works? Not, not exactly volunteers. It's more like, I mean, they are workshop participants, not workshop, but extreme build experience participants who are getting that experience alongside of people who are teaching them some and are participating as an active part of that build. In other words, they, uh, if present, they'll make the work more fun and faster and guarantee that they can get towards completion. Okay. But even with 24, with the people that we are paying, we should be able to do that within a time budget. So we're we're trying to overkill on the on the labor part. Now, why is that? I mean, we got to prove we got the the final thing is house sale, right? And we see we can get revenue. We, it's that number is greater than our costs. We are full bore on apprenticeship for for March. That's how I'm looking at it. Uh, actually, a good discussion with uh, Gary is the name of the plumbing contractor for for Stewartsville. He said that even down in the downturn right now in Savannah, houses sell next day. It's really good. Cool, cool. Um, Savannah is quite a desirable place, very family friendly, and right outside of St. Joe, with minus the city problems. All right, so so you know for sure what wage you're going to promise people? Yeah. Okay. And budget eighty four k thirty five an hour uh, for people who now thirty five is for people who can build. So people who have some okay. build experience. If they don't, we can pay them less, maybe twenty five. If some people are rising up to leadership positions, we should pay them more. Uh, okay. So, uh, so I th think thirty five is the average. I would say. Okay. And of course, uh, if people, yeah, I mean, we're expecting to spend a good budget on a, on a labor. If there's others that actually want to volunteer, the only way we can accept a volunteer is through some vetting, because I don't want to have a bunch of volunteers up here and think that they're showing up. And then- we'll Okay, yeah, that's, that's what I wanted to clarify is, yes. like, like, forget the volunteers for a second. We're, let's just focus on people who are showing up because you're going to pay them to do work. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and my recommendation would be just to clear, like have a clear message of if you're going to be in this, we're recruiting X number of crew leaders, X number of crew members, 
X number of site managers, whatever, whatever the, the position is, and have each position tied to a, a wage rate so that it, like right now, that's a constraint that we're going to plan around as opposed to just saying, on average, it'll be 35. Yeah. It'll be a much better marketing pitch if the people know, can sort themselves. And then to that end, are you going to have any sort of selection criteria? Or like, are you going to evaluate the people that... Well, we got to talk to them. And, and the number one thing I want to make sure is that they're, they're okay with our building methods. I mean, the issue that I've been harping on all, a lot of times is some people that just are used to doing things a certain way. And this experience is going to be quite different. So right. you have to manage the expectations ca carefully. And absolutely not get any people here that, for, I mean, we literally have to kick out. They don't want to do the work or something like that. Just any trouble, trouble individuals who are just not open-minded to, to to do the build. Okay. Uh, and we've seen, and we've been blown away by that. Even though we've got approvals from the engineer, from you know, from from the actual code official, they still say, "I'm not going to do it." So so we have right. to just absolutely make sure that we. I just don't want to hear it. You know, like if okay. they do that. Um, that's I'm, I'm gonna say thanks for letting me know that's not what you signed up for and let okay know. I mean because we want to make sure make sure we control that element and of course we've seen seen a lot of that um, that kind of stuff from all kinds of people so that's that's the only that's the vetting requirement we want to make sure of that otherwise a person who's eager to learn open-minded I'm not I would like for the people who if there's a person that actually wants to show up that's eager to build at 25 bucks an hour, I would select them over a more skilled $35 person who's a builder, who is questionable, who, who we don't have experience with regarding the, the mental, mental attitude. So because the, I mean, the, the explanation of that is our procedures are down we're pretty tight. We're gonna have to build cheat sheets. If you can use a tape measure, if you can mark things, you're able to participate. You're able to use a screw gun. The way it's gonna work a lot is we do quality control for everything. Right now I'm actually going through a detailed quality control procedure, for example, on an electric, which means you test every outlet and so forth with a safe voltage. Um, but we're gonna have that kind of procedure built in for every step. So for example, what I envision, like say we're at the module build level, guys, person, well, of course, there's gonna be a full-time dedicated QC person, and that's probably me. Um, I'm just gonna do QC, I see the whole picture, and I can, when I see people, and when I walk around and see people doing stuff, I can point out anything immediately. Now, when they're done, they're gonna call me and say, hey, uh, can you quality control this? And what we'll do a lot is we can just pre-screw things in so they're not in their final position. And then the, the, the end point of quality control will be nailed off, just make it all solid. So initially for the wall modules, screw in using like, you know, a couple of screws on each corner or, or even one screw on each corner. Uh, maybe the plywood just attached and then- Tack it, just tack it in. Just, yeah, just tack it in and then QC happens, nail off, final, with a nail gun. And that's safety issues, like the screw gun is, is very safe. Nail gun, you can, you can get hurt. Uh, so make sure we have people doing that properly. Um, but that's, that's an extremely effective way to do it, I think, because if there's any error, no problem. You just take it apart. And we've seen that. It's not, errors are typically not, not catastrophic. And we just need to mark off. I'll have my cheat sheet of um, my QC cheat sheet where I have. I'm just going through my checks, and then it's checked, and and we go on. So so there's a total of altogether for the interior exterior modules a number of about seven seventy one exterior interior. It's forty eight plus like thirty thirty three or so, like fifty and about eighty or so. And then there's of course like the larger assemblies like you've got. The, the joists or or an assembly where you, you attach all the joists. So we, we can actually pre-hang the joist hangers, things like that. But if you think about it, 80, 80 modules, all of them can be done up front. So in other words, in the initial stage of the build, if we had 160 people show up, everyone would be busy 
for an hour, for two hours, and then we'll assemble the house the second day. Um, I mean, assuming that you have, assuming you have tools, the workspace. Tools and workstations. So what are tools and workstations? So two two saw horses with a piece of plywood four by nine or the exterior OSB. You can work on that as the minimalist two saw horses plywood work the module on top of that. And in fact, the plywood is a self aligning mechanism. You know where it goes exactly against the plywood. So uh, we can do that. Um, so actually, saw horses the, the work for work workflow would be you got your saw horses and if you put the piece of plywood on top you can actually work that module right there you attach because it's four by nine it goes right against the edge we might actually consider right now it's offset by like a three quarters of an inch uh, we can actually not offset it so you line up ag against the edge exactly uh, I think we might do that that's that's a great simplification procedure otherwise you have to make sure you got a three quarter inch space with a spacer not a too big a deal but imagine just you got a panel four by nine and you're working right against its edge you've got a perfect square that's your quality control there I can only check if okay is it is the plywood hanging off the edges or whatever stuff like that and then you see it immediately it, let the materials tell you what's what's correct so that's that's for that um, what else for working space as far as the available working space there will be a very flat foundation of six of uh, about 16 by 48 uh, the slab is 16 by 32, and of course for the other one, it's, it's more like a thousand feet of super flat concrete. We can work on that for level level things. But literally, sawhorses on the on the flat ground, at there all around the house, is sufficient for a contingency plan. If it rains or weather is really bad, we just go here in Maysville in our workshop of 4,000 square feet and build all the modules in there which we've done before so uh, so the basics basics are there it's a, it's, a, it's effectively a site built home but if we get like if we get really foul weather we can do a lot uh, I don't think the weather is going to slow us down if we if we build inside the workshop and we can do that that same for both both lots and I'm planning uh, having a 40-foot trailer Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I have lots of thoughts. I'm, I'm trying to figure out the best way to go through this. Um, With the, the short objective of we need 24 people? No, I, I mean, thinking about the project as a whole. Yeah. Um, my mind is being pulled to things like where are people sleeping, how oh, yeah. many porta potties do you yeah. have on site? Do you have, yeah. uh, you know, how are you going to secure the material overnight? Uh, do you have overhead cover on the job site? How are you going to control the flow of people? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about this like operationally, sure. and I know you've done this before, and I don't, Operation. I don't know, like, well, you, you tell me what's useful because you've done this before, so you know what's possible, um, and I want to add value. I don't want to slow you down. Operationally, I think the easiest is people get a get a motel. The cost is quite manageable. Mm -hmm. um, on site, there is no cover unless we put tarps over. No, no. Assume no cover. We don't need it. If there's rain, there's weather issues. We go indoors in our facility that's either two miles away or mm -hmm. thirty miles away. So we can travel back and forth. It's thirty-five minutes to the far lot and two minutes to the you know two to five minutes for the lot. Mm -hmm. here. So, uh -huh. um, what other issues? So there's logistics of, of materials, storage. Well, what's the daily schedule going to be? I mean, are you going to have people, are you going to have a structured, you know, 8, eight to noon? Yeah, yeah. So, hour, so lunch, start one like to 7.30 to 5, probably, I would say. Yeah. Uh, so we have plenty of time. For lunch, I'm thinking, so I actually want to do, a, a friend of mine from high school has a barbecue truck. I was going to do that where we say, okay, we provide lunch on site for breakfast and 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 dinner. People go off to their, their places. Um, f prep beforehand. Of course, we do as good a job as we can on an announcement. And then I, I want to do a week of like 30-minute webinars like, bam power packed 30 minute webinars for people to get prepared on 
the workflow, describe it in the workflow, what I described to you briefly, and expand on that for every every subsystem, so that people when people come here, they're kind of familiar with the idea of, of swarms and, and digital design and collaboration, um, learning environment kind of thing. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so inspire people a week before, like week before, 30 minutes, you know, say five evenings or something, people kind of start wrapping their head around this. Uh, for tools, we've got about uh, 20 or so, what's, what's our number, not 20, we've got like 16 or something cordless drills, we can uh, do all cordless so we can, we're well set on that, we can get as many as we like, depending, I, I would prefer people just bring their own too, that's fine, the, the tool you need is a hammer, a, a drill, uh, safety equipment, you know, hard hat, eyewear, earplugs, gloves, and long long sleeves in the winter um, but um, for additional tools there's there's some tools that are in shorter supply but I mean because we can do a lot of the processes in parallel we can divvy up the tools like say somebody you know we've got one table saw you know multiple cordless cordless hand saws and stuff like that. tools haven't been a problem initially a lot of people that do come they, they end up bringing a cordless drill or you know a cordless circular saw or whatever uh, and those things really work well. These they used to, used to not be like that about ten years ago. Right now, every single tool is like cordless. Um, so it's the tools are actually quite easy. There's nail guns. We've got several, like three, four, five of those. Um, we can get more. Uh, I'll look at after doing the you know seeing how many people we have and divvying up the tasks. We can say, do we need more tools for the event? Which we can get readily from Amazon or Harbor Freight here um, a lot of times we don't, we don't get the best tools because we know that with novices people drop them and break them pretty quickly so um, but tools are uh, quite affordable these days and we've got some specialized tools like vacuum pump for the HVAC unit we've got um, some testing jigs for pressure testing and electrical testing and uh, what we do plan on doing is uh, so I do want to get some people like a week ahead of time uh, for prep work I'd like to build some jigs possibly very simple jigs where you just have patterns or pegs laid out for because there's a bunch of repeating modules you can jig that out quite readily that would be nice to have that and there's a foundation that's two weeks uh, we're gonna start that at least two weeks ahead of time it would be nice to have somebody here, like two people, two assistants, that are working with me on that um, right after the grading part. Um, I can do the grading, it's not too bad. Uh, as far as putting in the forms and all of that, could use, a, use help for that and the poor. The poor works best with a four, four persons, a good crew on that. So I would want. Uh, three people can do it because of the small size for the 1,000. Three people is good for the large. Three, three people working very hard is acceptable. Four people is, is an easier job for, it's, it's not a too big a foundation. We get uh, two, two trucks for the big one, one truck for the small one. Uh, but a lot of it is machines. You get, you got the, the grading with the bobcat. You got excavation work for the trenches and augering for the, the posts and the carport. So that's like heavy machine stuff. And the rest is like all foundation work, yeah. Just somebody here would be good. And then they transition actually to preparing for the workshop. So, so I would want two people to be here assisting uh, two weeks ahead of time. Two people, two weeks ahead of time. And we can be in really good shape getting everything uh, in place. I can reach out to my friend with a the food setup uh, to help um, on the food side. So I'm thinking, it's like, yeah, you're on your own for breakfast and dinner. We'll feed you food on a, during lunch. There's an, we're planning on an hour lunch. Uh, so there's a good time there. I mean, I could even consider like, in a, I think I even put one and a half hours for the lunch, in which case we can actually discuss or actually, um, depending on how many people show up, how, how much is the education aspect versus just get stuff done aspect. We could actually discuss and, and like have a half an hour session over lunch as we uh, go through the builds to make the experience uh, more educational.
Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so well, between now and when the foundation goes in or when you need the first people to show up, yeah. how, you know, what are we doing to prepare? What do you need from me? Um, yeah. Outreach people bodies to sign sign up we gotta we we need to have a little contract a little work contract uh disclaimers and all that so main thing is bodies get those bodies vet them so that means we talk to them uh we need to prepare you like you have to have a feeling for like can you explain how this works to somebody i mean you heard me talking about it we got a little bit of experience on, on woodwork yourself you're asking me if i can explain it yeah, can you explain it? Actually, can, are you in a position to vet the people to to actually? So we po post an announcement ASAP. Uh, go to your your channels through the vets and everything else, all your networks, and and start blasting this and, and active recruitment for the event. I'm going to start making noise on that. Uh, right. Vets and all that. So that's that's where we're at. We're we're ready to make noise. Um, starting immediately with with friends and then for some whoever needs more explanation. Like I, I would right now, like tomorrow, or to, tomorrow or today, I'm working on a permanent thing. Uh, starting tomorrow, probably get just reach out to all the people from former workshops, get a newsletter out, and and say hey, who wants to come. Uh, people that we know, especially there's there's three or four people that I'd like to have as so so called instructors. Uh, instructors. Uh, I would want to say six people who are in an instructor role. So I'm I'm one of them. So plus like five more who are capable of instructing people so that means they've done it before there's like three people probably that three to six that could come I'll, I'll look for people that I know that that can do that I'll be reaching out for that uh, but definitely for others who want to step into that role I mean some people just of course naturally are okay I mean person who's just an average participant but they're like the best teacher and they <laughs> everyone swarms around them for te for getting schooled on things that happens too um, but a healthy mix of six people who are capable of instructing, six people who are just hardcore workers who know how to install a door, a knob, or an electrical outlet. Those We need six people who are technically savvy, six pe people teachers, 12 people bodies, eager to learn. And preferably and the eager to learn person than a know-it-all who has more skill because that and, does not work. Okay, and uh, are, are the instructors, the DIYers, and the 12 bodies going to have different pay scales? So instructors, we should probably pay them more depending on what, depending on what they can do. If they commit, can commit to some upfront preparation, like really look at our stuff or be familiar with our stuff, what I would do is, I mean, I would just blanket it, it as to keep it very simple for now. You know, 35 bucks an hour for people who are coming from former workshops, um, possibly offer more to some. And I mean, I, it's really hit the ground running. We know we need uh, what I told you before, 35 for like average, but I'd say like 50 and 50. If somebody's actually like, a really good person we can pay more like like 75 like if they're actually capable of independently running that means they have to prepare and study this stuff a little bit but an experienced person who wants to part participate and they're getting paid more like in a construction manager role uh, because we're doing this in sequence I am the so-called construction manager slash general manager slash QC now we can dole out the QC to people who have done this before. And ideally, you know, I have my, my booklet of, of QC pr procedures. Ideally, <laughs> we have enough people savvy enough that I just hand it out and I, I do, I'm observing more. I'm like taking a back background role. Because part of it is, for me, is observing how effective the instructionals are to make me not needed, to empower people as much as possible take all the materials that we that we have so part of it I mean my goal is like man if I can go into this event and just walk around doing nothing that would be my number one metric of success uh, because we actually transferred the knowledge successfully to, to many others 
So does that kind of, am I getting off track or are we getting an answer on pay scale? Not really. Um, I mean, I can, I can work up some numbers and run it by you. Um, the way that I would handle, like if I didn't know you and this was just a project that I was assigned to lead, the way I would I would handle it is a very like structured, rigorous planning process, yeah. um, which I'm happy to do. But it's <laughs> with this much time left, it's going to be extremely. It's it's a lot of effort to do accomplish what we need to accomplish before the build. Now. Like, there's a risk in going that route. Like, if you were to say, John, I need you to handle, I need you to set up all the meetings and, and keep track of all the planning and and all this, you know, like, like be my chief of staff, basically. Um, there's a risk if you're not comfortable with doing things that way. And you've, you've done this before, and I haven't. So well, what, I'm... What's the risk on my part? Like, say you, you, you're chief of staff. Specifically what? Because... I mean, here's here's the structure. The, the biggest structure is a detailed set, set of building plans and modular breakdown. That means that kind of process <coughs> can, in principle, be structured as a very decentralized process. So, as long as materials are there, as long as people are there, don't worry about legal and found <coughs> foundation. I'm working that out. Yeah. What are the critic? Let's let's examine it from the standpoint of critical ingredients: people, instructionals, and materials. That's the golden trio. People are the procedures, uh, inc including the instructionals are the procedures. Bill materials are self-explanatory. So there's, I always refer to the holy triumvirate of CAD, BOM, build. So CAD, got it. BOM. Got it. I mean, all the materials are going to be on site or procured. We're getting things like we already ordered windows, for example, or siding. And we have a lot of the modules from last year, from the last build. We have to modify them, but we can use a lot of that. So outside of that, it's this big material order of wood. There's a bunch of different specialized parts. But I don't see too much trouble on that, given that we use very generic supply chains and design everything for ease of s sourcing and substitutability and immediate procurement from local box stores, big box stores mm -hmm. and things. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's that. So the main thing is um, focusing on the roles that people get, but we're pretty good on the roles because we can say, okay, okay, leader, if you want to be a leader, here's like these 10 modules or, or like this section of the build that maybe a, a lot that we divvy up and uh, without knowing who those people are we can't have that discussion but uh, i would say before the the event uh ideally we would have so so i told you about the 30 minute um, build orientation thing we should have another 30 minutes for the crew leaders saying okay how does it you know just getting into more depth about actual workflow like okay uh can you do that with a four inch screw or do you need a different different nail gun for that uh whatever uh, just working out some technical execution details that they might have insight on uh, improvements because we are making improvements not on design but on process design leave it alone don't touch it that's that's one of the rules we have spent extensive time refi making refinements anything that we change is a risk so so let's not worry about the design and of course so the rule there is of course we want your feedback on that but that is taken in a form we're building that according to plan right now. We're not changing plans right now. However, record that for the next build and after evaluating this for ergonomics and all our workflow procedures, we can consider that for the next build, but not right now. But there could be some minor things that <clears throat> from tooling or just some techniques or whatever, jigging, other things that help us execute this one faster before trying to invent anything new. <clears throat> Got it. <clears throat> um, okay, so so the way I'm looking at this is, you're trying to do something really challenging with 24-ish people in a really cold time of year. Right. That is that's a leadership challenge, even before you get into mm. contingencies like personality conflicts or the porter John doesn't show up on time right. or the there's a the delivery truck breaks down. 
And so, um, but it, all, all I was saying is like, they, I, I in my head think of a way, I, th I, can, I can imagine a way to structure this, the, the planning and preparation for this to be thorough and, and keep everyone on the same page. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a very big work lift in order to do it, it's going to require a tremendous amount of time and effort from both of our parts. Right. And, um, and like, b b if we go down that route, I'm happy to do that if that's what you want me to do. I'm just letting you know that it's, it requires like your buy-in and consistency to make work. Because if you, if you, because you've already done this, if you are comfortable, you know, just giving me, me one-off tasks, and not centralizing the process like I'm, like I would do as far as your shoes. And then I throw on this like structured plan and everything, and we don't follow it. It's no good. It's a good, it's going to be a waste of everyone's time. So what would the plan include? That's that's different. Because I mean, the, my first response is, well, of course, somebody else managing the process, putting more structure on top of it, would be good. Obviously, you have to comply with. There's you know, there's all the prior art we have. So I'm. I'm oh no, I'm not talking. I'm not talking about the actual build. I'm talking about the planning framework between now and when you break ground. I'm talking about the planning process that we go through as we build the team and establish the timeline and identify all the tasks that need to be accomplished and how we're going to accomplish them. Mm -hmm. Like that process. I like the the build. Like when you break ground, you should have. 98% confidence that everything we've thought of all the contingency, every, everything that you can delegate, you've delegated. And at that point, it's execution. So like, I'm not, I'm not messing with that. What I'm trying to do is take your vision for how you want the build to go and turn it into a list of, a, you know, progressive tasks that begin today and end when you go start grading the, the site. Yeah. Yeah, my question is like I'm somewhat confused because why why not if you if you can help on that what what is the risk of of doing? Oh, it? I mean, obviously I need your help. I need the help of okay, you yeah. to do this. I mean, yeah, the 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 risk is is if you're not if you specifically aren't bought into that process or if other people we bring on aren't and it's inconsistent, it it's not going to work. Like the only way that this that that you applying a structured framework to to planning this is going to work is if everybody buys into it and recognizes like you as the leader and me as the person enabling all of the shit going on that you need done. But tell me why 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 would I not have buy into that? Uh, oh, because because you it's all in your head. Like you've already done this before. Well, yeah. It may be a waste of your time, you know. It may be a waste of you you, you may want if we're, if we're doing work to to formalize the process because remember that big part of this is to make it replicable like this has <laughs> got to get out of my head right i mean this is good news yeah if 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 you don't think it's wish i just wanted to like i just wanted to give you the opportunity to be like no i got this just no. listen to me and do what i do okay. do i have anything <laughs> <laughs> okay so like all right <laughs> if, if that's the case we need to start up we need to get the word out that's yeah. step one with a teaser. It doesn't have to be super refined. We just need to get yeah. the word out. And then we need to tell people the next time that they can check in to, like we were having the weekly meetings, we need to start that up again. Yeah. Like next week. Yeah, exactly. For sure. Okay. Oh, um, I think we're on the same page. You're just being a gentleman. Yeah, and I just want to give you the opportunity to be like, to lead, right? And and honestly, like I don't want to, I don't want to invest a whole lot of time and energy into like, going into the weeds on this with you if you're not if you're just doing it to be nice like no, if you're just going so along right the number one metric for this is how replicable do we make it for others can we contribute to that so 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 the question would be for you like can you see the vision of this being a benefit to society and in, in our <laughs> in our social vision that you and i share do you see a purpose in this actually making this process transparent documented literally an sop that we can yeah. dole out to future leaders because yeah, I want to step right. back as soon as I can. You know? Right, of course, I, of course I do, of course I do. Um, I, I will tell you now that I I have reservations, I have concerns about the amount of tasks that need to be done and the peop like the um, number of people that we can delegate to yeah. early enough to make a difference. 
Well, that's that's why the, it seems that the central question is to make sure that we have people show, you know, yeah. people showing up. I mean, the way uh, the way this works, I always call it the. I think I mentioned this before: the window of opportunity approach. We can, we do what we are in a able to do, but we we say no. We got to do this build right now, otherwise it's like next year, next year kind of thing. Um, like the stuff that's happened. It's challenging for people because people don't want to do this, but I'm trying to keep the pace because the task is humongous. And if we don't do early prototyping and accept failure as an option, we're not getting anywhere. So we got to take risk. And and um, the biggest thing, like the more you mess up, the more you learn. That's my approach. So right. I'm not afraid of that. And at this, well, the other part is that at this point we are so much better than ever before, right? You know, so right after 2016, I said, "Wow, this is amazing." Now other people on the team were like, "Man, there's a, these and these shortcomings." I'm like, "This is amazing," and I just continue with that and try not to. <laughs> I mean, my psychology is like, I, you know, I have to protect myself from listening to people who say. The, the negatives, uh, I understand those negatives, and that's exactly what we're trying to fix. The primary things being absolute perfection of the design and workflows. There's people experience issues. There's, I mean, the biggest thing is after that, after we work some of that out, we've got our apprenticeship and scaling this to others. There's a lot, a lot of tasks on the, on the thing. And, and I believe, I don't believe in, like, this is an example of me taking the cross off my back, not to be Jesus to carry the load. I, I, I'm comfortable with that. And uh, I am comfortable like that because my ambition is great. I have to do that, right? So someone would be kidding themselves if they don't try to offload. No, that's great. Okay, so so here's what I propose. Um, <clears throat> I have to run to another meeting at, in eight minutes. Yeah. Um, I'm going to come up with uh, some teaser announcements. Yeah. All right, and then I'm going to start out a framework that I'll be able to send to you by Monday and a proposal for the first, like, open meeting for potential participants. Yeah, but, I mean, once again, don't count too much on open meetings. It's, it's very opportunistic. When we find people that are aligned, you know, they jump on and all of that. But let's not make it um, – I mean, typically we work openly, but limit to extreme open work like that is you get people who are just out of the left left field. They have to have some good commitment for that, them to be a meaningful part of that meeting. We don't want to spend any time like trying to get too much from people from people who don't have the commitment. You know, you know what okay. I mean, right? Yeah, I, I'll do some. Too much from that. We we, we expect right. a lot from people that are we're going to pay and, and expect to show up and have a very clear commitment of what we're providing to them and what, what they're providing to us. That's the way we have right. to operate. So, so the curveball there is, well, how do we open it up to people? Yeah, we can, but we want to allow those the additional people who are more in a learning or, or volunteer state, um, just just gauge your expectations on that. Just don't worry about it. We're designing this to, to succeed uh, without that as part of the revenue model. Now, we are including that in the revenue model because that can definitely make our life easier. There's revenue, there's labor, there's outreach and you know, all kinds of benefits from involving more people uh, so we definitely want to be open to that and it's actually when I thought about this it's like man I don't feel comfortable just being another developer who's got a closed operation we got to be pushing those limits and that's the nature with which I'm saying no no we got to do this public event too because I know some people are going to get a lot out of that and we should make that an option of just in our general education mission yeah Okay. <clears throat> well, um, I I have some work to do. Um, I owe you something to deliver on Monday. It'll be it'll have be some type of framework for you to look at to get a sense of where I'm going. We should talk shortly after that, maybe Tuesday, and <clears throat> I'll start getting the word out, um, and we'll take let's it from talk. there. We're gonna do Monday Monday at one. Let's do let's do um, that. If you're gonna do that by then, let's let's get right into it because times. Time's short. Monday at yeah, I can do Monday at yeah. one. 
Okay. My main focus right now is I'm actually documenting further things like in the, in the house bill, just the last steps, just further documentation, further uh, just really getting a very clear idea of the workflow and and the level of integration that's needed. So, so I mean, I'm, I'm doing that and I'm trying to <laughs> wrangle the legal stuff. I think we've got, the, we've got it pretty much solved as, I mean, I'm pretty much, well, I'm actually hitting close. I actually instructed the realtor to close on the Savannah. The closing on the Maysville is, um, I mean, as soon as they give me the documents, so as soon as basically the title work gets done, so we're moving. Okay. Lots of tasks. Um, and that major task of, of like the, the subcontractors, well, we found the plumbing uh, for electrical, we're pretty, we're pretty good on that. Um, and we don't have, on the legal front, we don't have legal barriers to actually being able to, to break ground at this point. Okay. Um, let me, let me, give me an opportunity, give me some time to do some work. Mm -hmm. All right. And then Monday we'll talk, I'll show you what I have and we'll go from there. Yeah. Um, this is exciting. Yeah. Um, I may be able to come out. Maybe. That'd be great. Um, so, but I gotta, I gotta hop in for now. I yeah. think I know what I need to do. Give I me a chance it. to get started. But yeah. The vision in your mind is going to be 24 people who are blown away by how fast we build this and how good the product is. That's kind of right. that's where I'm at. We got to create that. We are creating. We know we've done it before. This is going to be that and better. Like that's and then like the the fear is like, "Oh man, this is going to mess up." But no, I mean, we know we've do actually done uh, spectacular results already in history so we're in a, we're, and it can only get better so that's that's the mindset to be in mm -hmm. sounds good man okay. okay thanks so much man we'll, we'll talk thank soon. you yeah, send me an invite for monday thank you we'll do bye, bye.